Okay, to summarize, we can see that self-organizing learning by itself can't learn to solve challenging problems. It's only driven by the statistics, these correlations, and it's not responsive to the actual mistakes that the network is making, and it's not trying to fix those mistakes. And that suggests a very obvious intuitive solution to this problem, which is to make the network work directly, the learning to work directly to fix the mistakes that are actually being made. It sounds very intuitive, it is. Um, this is in fact the very deep insight behind deep neural network models these days. All the powerful AI techniques that you're seeing um, are really driven by this one very simple insight. Fix the problem. <laughs> That's all you have to do. You drive learning as a function of the errors that are actually being made. And this is captured in this core idea called the Delta Rule, um, also developed by Woodrow and Hoff in the 60s. And the idea is simply that the change in synaptic weight is proportional to the sending activity times the difference between the target value that you should have produced and the actual activation value that you did produce. This is the error, okay? This is what you should have done, this is what you did, and now you're changing your weights directly as a function of the error that you made. And you can compare that with the Hebbian learning rule, which as we saw before is the change in weight is proportional just to this sending activity times the receiving activity directly. And what you see here is that, you know, it's a very similar kind of overall mathematical expression, but you're just changing it so that you're learning as a function of the mistakes instead of learning as a function of just the raw activity itself. And so this essentially ends up learning some kind of statistics of how often those neurons co-occur with each other. Whereas this learns, hey, if I make a mistake, I should move my synaptic weights so that the activity of the output unit is closer to the target value than what it was originally. And so if you look at the specific cases of this, you can see that, for example, if the target is one and the, the receiving unit in this case was l less active, like, you know, zero, for example, then one minus zero is one, you're going to increase the strength of those synaptic weights. Um, in proportion or specifically with respect to those neurons in the input that are active at the same time. And so there is some element of having to of taking into account the activity of the sending units. And this turns out to be very important for producing a kind of uh, um, credit assignment uh, dynamic in the network. In the other case that we can look at, the target, for example, might be zero. If the unit was active, 0.5, for example, uh, that difference is 0 minus 0 0.5. That's a negative number, and that says that the weights should decrease. And so you can see, if you're active and you shouldn't have been, you're going to decrease your weights. If you were not active and you should have been, you're going to increase your weights. And that's literally, it's that simple, right? So you're really just trying to fix the errors, change the pattern of activity, by increasing or decreasing the synaptic weights to match the target value. Now, that just makes perfect intuitive sense. There's just one catch here, a couple catches actually, but there's one major catch. Uh, where does that target come from? You know, that's really great to have that answer there, but uh, in general, we're kind of not sure what is the right target value that the neurons should, get, should be active at. And so that is a huge problem with this kind of approach. We'll see several different types of solutions to it, but I just wanna just flag that hopefully you understand the basic logic that if you did have this target, you could do a lot better job learning to achieve or match that target value through this kind of learning mechanism as compared to this kind of learning mechanism, which simply does not take the target value into account. And in that simple pattern associator example that we were looking at, it definitely includes that uh, target value. So we can at least focus on that case and see if that fixes our problem. We'll introduce some additional terminology to refer to these 
two aspects of error-driven learning. Uh, this comes from the Boltzmann machine originally. Uh, the minus phase is what we use to refer to the guess or prediction or expectation. This is what the network comes up with on its own, its own activity. And in this previous diagram, that's the Y value, the activity of the receiving unit. And then the plus phase is how we describe the, the name we use for the target outcome or reality, the thing that the network should have come up with, the, the kind of training signal that we want the network to produce. And so we can write that same weight change equation in terms of the sending activity times the kind of receiving activity in the plus phase, this target correct answer, minus the, re the activity in the minus phase. And that kind of gives you a sense of where the minus and plus come from, very pragmatically defined in terms of the thing you want to get to, the plus, the direction you're heading, relative to the value that you actually came up with on your own that was maybe not correct. And again, if these two are equal, you do not change the weights at all. So if you've got the right answer, you don't change your synaptic weights. If you don't have the right answer, you change them to head in the direction of the plus phase and away from the minus phase. So we can go back to our model here and switch the network. Instead of using Hebbian, we can use error-driven. Initialize it here. Let's go back to using the hard problem. Okay, and now we're going to see how the network works uh, trial by trial. And in this case, we're allowing the network to be active in what we call the minus phase. And if I show you that activity in the minus phase, act M, this is what the, the network produced on its own based on the input units being active, but no uh, enforced or clamped activity in the output layer. And that's essentially what we're seeing in the delta rule. This is the value of the activity Y, the receiving activity in the absence of any other further you know, clamping. But in the plus phase, we basically drive that output as a function of this target value. And um, that is T in that delta rule equation. And that then is the difference that we're seeing. This error is the difference essentially between the, acti the activation in the minus phase when the network came up with its own guess of what it should produce versus the plus phase when it received that sort of target correct value on its activity. And we can look at the diff as the difference between those two states. That's the overall kind of error signal. And we can look at how the error-driven learning mechanism actually updates the synaptic weights. We're gonna click on that D weight value for this neuron here and recall that this one is the one that was not active on its own, but should have been active according to the target value. And we can see that the weights have been increased from the sending active units down there in the input for that particular uh, receiving unit. So this one should be active. It wasn't active. Therefore, we're going to increase its synaptic weights to make it more likely to be active next time. In contrast, this one was active in the minus phase. So we click on act M. We can see that it was active in the minus phase, but it should not have been active. It was turned off in the plus phase. It, it wasn't part of the target pattern and therefore its synaptic weights are decreased. Again, very intuitive. You punish the errors and you try to build up the appropriate correct response and you always do that in proportion to the sending unit activity. And so we literally just keep running that basic kind of delta rule type of learning. Over time, we're doing this same hard problem that couldn't be solved before. Let's see how it does. So we can do a step run. And amazingly, the network can solve this problem. The network shows you that it has gotten the patterns correct. Um, and it has learned a pattern of synaptic connections that is capable of solving this problem. Uh, you can go through and try to understand the exact pattern of weights, but basically for the first output unit, you really need to learn about the two outside units. And then for, this, for the second one, you actually learn about the two inside ones. And because the error signals are shaping these synaptic weights, it's essentially mathematically guaranteed 
to solve the problem. And that's really the key point.